Cuba has successfully eliminated mother-to-child transmission of both HIV and syphilis, the World Health Organization says. The head of the WHO, Dr. Margaret Chan, says one of the greatest public health achievements possible. It follows years of efforts to give pregnant women early access to prenatal care, testing, and drugs to stop these diseases from moving from mother to child. The WHO hopes uh, other countries will be able to achieve the same. Every year, globally, around 1.4 million women living with HIV become pregnant. Untreated, they have a 15 to 45 percent chance of transmitting the virus to their children during pregnancy, labor, delivery, or breastfeeding. A total of 107 detainees remain in Guantanamo Bay, the U.S. military facility that U.S. President Barack Obama pledged in 2009 to close within a year. The American Civil Liberties Union describes the prison as a failure on every front. Since it opened, 21 children have been detained there, nine prisoners have died in custody, several as a result of apparent suicide, and more than 200 FBI agents have reported abuse treatment of prisoners. The number of inmates may come down to 90 as early as January, as 17 detainees have been approved for transfer. A pressure is mounting on Obama to fulfill his shutdown promise. An Ohio grand jury has declined to indict two police officers in the death of Tamir Rice, a 12-year-old boy who was shot to death by Cleveland police last year. Juga County Prosecutor Timothy McGinty said Tamir was holding a toy gun when he was shot by Officer Timothy Lohman at a Cleveland playground on November 2014. The grand jury was hearing evidence to determine if any of the charges would be brought against Lohman or his partner, Frank Garnback. A total of 1,125 people have been killed by police in the U.S. this year. The U.S. government has not kept a comprehensive record of how many people are killed by law enforcement, though new efforts are underway. So this year, The Guardian decided to do just that. The resulting database tells the story of those who were killed, their demographics, and how they died. The project was inspired in part of one of those individuals whose death became the biggest news stories of 2015. In April, a 25-year-old African-American male named Freddie Gray died from injuries he sustained while he was in the custody of Baltimore Police Department. Gray's death and more than 1,000 other documented thus so far this year have become a focal point of those protesting against police brutality and racial injustice in America. One of this year's deadliest mass shootings was particularly heartbreaking in court because of its location inside of a church. The shooting at Charleston's historic Emanuel AME Church in June caused national mourning and outrage after a 21-year-old white supremacist attended a Bible session at the famed predominantly African-American church before opening fire on the group. The shooter, Dylan Roof, was apprehended the morning after the June 17 attack and is awaiting trial on 33 counts including murder, firearms charges, as well as federal hate crime charges. The judge entered a not guilty plea on his behalf. Terror struck in Paris one week into the new year when a group of men with extensive ties to terrorist organizations targeted the offices of famed satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo. Two men shot their way into the offices while a third awaited near a getaway car. The shooters forced their way into the publication's offices, killing a maintenance man and police bodyguard assigned to protect their editor after he received death threats. Once arriving at the office, they proceeded to kill nine others, mostly editorial staff gathered for the weekly meeting, injuring an additional 11. A faction of Al-Qaeda claimed responsibility. The attacks continued in France for two more days, taking the lives of six others, including two police officers and four people held hostage at a kosher grocery store in Paris. Three of the perpetrators also died. A series of coordinated terror attacks struck fear through the heart of the French capital on Friday, November 13th. A combination of shooters and men wearing explosive vests targeted a football stadium, restaurants, and a concert venue that evening, leaving 130 people dead. French officials determined that the attackers had ties to ISIS, which has claimed responsibility. The alleged ringleader of the attacks was killed five days later when authorities raided his apartment in the northern Paris suburb of St. Denis. An international man is still underway for the or at least one other suspect. The tectonic plates of Canadian politics shifted dramatically this year with the election of the Liberal candidate Justin Trudeau at the end of a decades-long reign by Conservative Stephen Harper. Trudeau knew to politics because making him the underdog, making his election one of the most shocking in recent Canadian history. 
After years of lobbying to enter the Syrian war, Russia finally got its chance when ISIS entered the conflict. U.S. imperialist interests could no longer oppose Russian involvement due to its official policy of opposing ISIS. In a short time, Russia began bombing the terrorist group positions, causing them major losses and causing their illegal oil trade to nearly reach collapse. And finally, at number one, tens of thousands of people fleeing war-torn Syria and other areas of the Middle East and Africa spent much of this summer making the laborious and dangerous trek through Europe towards countries including Germany and Sweden in the hopes of finding asylum. The influx of refugee families prompted international disputes and policy shifts as countries such as Hungary started to close some of their borders and put up fences with a razor wire to prevent people from entering. President Obama's plan to allow 10,000 Syrian refugees in the United States was met with stiff resistance from some House Republicans who have called for stricter certifications that none of the immigrants poses a security risk. If you like this video and you'd like to see more of them, then head over to my Patreon page and show your support. Or you can go to the MRN Bookstore and check out some of the latest books available. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and share on various social media.